Hello and welcome back to my studio. Well, excuse the paint everywhere, but uh, it's been one of those mornings where I've been working on uh, new lessons for my art coaching course. And uh, one of the subjects I'm dealing with at the moment is um, color. And I'm also responding to a question that um, one of my subscribers sent me and it is about a good way to paint shadows. Now, shadows are an important part of every landscape. Well, in fact, just about every representational painting needs some good shadows of some sort. And one of the things that are so difficult about shadows is making them read correctly. Like the, to make sense of them and then what do you do to maybe make them more interesting and I know that photography has messed up with shadows so much by um, under uh, developing or under exposing I should say the uh, shadows making them much darker than they should be so if you're going to be working with photographs this lesson may be particularly helpful to you but um, in any case, there's also a bit of uh, color theory, a few advanced ideas in color theory that I'm going to be showing you as I mix colors on the palette. So let's have a look at um, a way to approach painting shadows in your landscape paintings. So I've already suggested another important factor, and that is the relationships between your light and dark colors and the type of day you're dealing with and the quality of the light is so important. You've got to know is it a bright warm day or is it an overcast day. If it's very overcast it may throw things out and your shadows could actually start getting warm. But uh, that I will leave to another day. Let's deal with warm sunny weather. So everything is in relationship to something else. A dark green like that is going to work for us as a shadow color. Just to get the ball rolling, dark shadows. Now we've got our road to deal with. So like I said, um, we're going to talk about yellow ochre as the local color. A light value yellow ochre and you can mix these colors if you really want careful mixes use use a palette knife especially getting larger piles of it mixed up better idea so let's say that's our starting point is it warm enough that is always a question because there's a lot of white in here and white does cool things down. So I think maybe a touch of yellow just to really bring sunlight into it. Right? We're creating an effect of light as best as we can with pigment. So I think that now has got a nice dollop of warmth in it. So here's the light, so our sunlight is going to be down this side and with our sunny light we're going to have nice thick paint. Okay, now we need shadow, right, coming across the road. Here's our local color and of course you're going to bring some blue into it. And is that enough? Is that going to sufficient change in temperature and value? Probably at the far end of the shadow because the shadow does get softer as more light gets into it further away from the source of the shadow. So that may be okay over there. But as we get closer to the source, it's definitely darker. So more blue. Well, let's actually start at the source. So I'm going to bring in 
bit of ultramarine. Touch more yellow ochre in there, and I've got a nice desaturated color, which is working as a shadow. Okay, it's got the local color in it, and it's got the blue to cool it down and get the values correct. And it'll soften up as more reflected light gets into it. Perhaps at this base, we have some light getting through to the grass on the side of the road. So I'm going to bring some of that in there. In essence, what we've done, we've created a shadow that is going to suggest the cool um, shadow across the road, of course, but also it's going to accentuate the warmth of the sunlit areas around it. Now, as shadows head off into the distance, they will also be affected by aerial perspective, which, as we know, makes edges softer and colors get cooler. So we've got, and makes values also lighter with distance. So if we've got a darker shadow here, we're going to have, in the distance, we'll have a lighter shadow. It will get lighter, more vaporous. As I said, also influenced by aerial perspective. Even the warm colors are going to cool down over the distance as well. Um, and that helps to bring your road down, binds it down to the land, and you get a more realistic effect. So there we have it. That's, that's really it. And apply these principles to any thing that's coming into shadow, whether it's um, tree trunks, let's just say they're brown and bring some blue into it, and you've got your tree trunk, etc. Everything gets influenced by the quality of the light and the volume of the light on that subject that you're painting. And simply by adjusting relationships, one shape and the next, you can enhance the, the sense of light in your paintings and get beautiful effects of light. And it's all about relationships. We tend to forget to compare. Always compare one color note to the next to get accurate relationships. And it'll read right, it'll feel right, and people will respond to it so much better.